Hi, I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm the host of Best of Us Investors. Um, we're a tribe of like-minded investors who like to invest in long term. And I've pretty much specialized in finding stocks that I think are going to change the way I live. And that's how I do my research. I pretty much uh, invest based on events. And I think the biggest event in my 76 years of life has been the, um, the coronavirus and how it's going to focus uh, so much attention on medical change in the future. And I'm excited because I found a company in my backyard that I think is going to be easily a three banger uh, over the probably the next year and a half. And so uh, I want to dig deep into it and give you some information as I'm acquiring more information on it and see if we can't collectively come together and say, this is something we really want to get behind. So uh, stick with me. This is a biotech stock. It's uh, located here in Birmingham, Alabama. And I think I'm going to open your eyes to a real opportunity of a company that has worked hard for 25 years. And, and I guess it just goes to show how hard work, dedication, focus can end up in, with some fantastic results. So stay with me on this. Uh, I think you're going to, to really be shocked as to the potential here. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. Okay, let me give you the scenario as I read it, and then we'll talk about the company. Let's assume that you have hereditary angiodenema. What that basically is, it's a it, be, being hereditary, it's a genomic disease. It's a fallacy within your genome makeup that basically gives you a blood disorder that causes you a lot of pain and swelling as a result of this disorder. Uh, <clears throat> and as it has been diagnosed in the past and it is treated through a couple of drugs that are that require an injection. Now, as I've read more about this, I guess I have never had this situation where I had to, on a daily or a every other day basis, put a needle in my arm to make sure that my body doesn't swell up. And in fact, if it gets, it can potentially swell up my organs and kill me, that I had to live the rest of my life sticking a needle in my arm. So, and then I, as I dug deeper, I found out that there are roughly 10,750 people in the United States today doing this, and roughly 50,000 of them worldwide. And this treatment to keep their, their, their system, their blood system working properly and not experiencing this excruciating pain or this potential of death costs them about $50,000 a year. And it is uh, covered by insurance. Wow, that's interesting. So what if, though, you found out as a person who had this and has had it for years, that there is now a oral pill? That is, rather than shooting yourself in the arm every other day, uh, you could take a pill, much as I take a statin every morning, or I take my... NM, NMN every morning. No big thing. It just happens. It goes down with my orange juice. Would that change your life? Would that change your life? I think it would. So I've come across a company called BioCrisp, tick, ticker BCRX, that is headquartered here in Birmingham that up developed this drug and is making it available uh, to here in the United States. It is, its title or its name is or, Orladeo, O-R-L-A-D-E-Y-O, Orladeo. So the FDA approved it 
in December of last year. They started marketing it in first quarter of this year. To give you some representation, first quarter 2020, they had revenue sales of $4.8 million for the company. First quarter 2021, they had sales of $19 million. Point one. $19.1 million. That's a, almost a 4x increase in their revenue. Their stock price, as a result of that first quarter announcement, went up from roughly $10 to $15 per share. So a 50% increase in price. Wow, that's wonderful. I missed it. So with that in mind, I then looked and said, what is the ramifications of this on a full scope? Obviously, the 19 million does not reflect that all 10,750 people switched. Because again, you've got to recognize that you've got to get the doctor who is treating the patient aware of the drug, confident of the drug, and ask the patient, would you rather switch from injecting yourself every other day to taking a pill every other day? And the cost to you remains the same because your insurance company is going to pay for it. I think you can see that people are going to make the switch. So I basically said, if they got a 30 to 70%, uh, what would you call a uh, usage rate, this would turn into somewhere between a 300 million to 100 or 1 billion source of revenue. And this is also considering that they just got approval for this just within the last couple days in Japan. It is on fast track approval in the UK and the other European countries. Totally we are expecting that there is a potential of 50,000 people worldwide. This will generate, as I said, sales of, it, they're projecting by 2025, sales of two to four billion. Well, right now, today, at its current price of about $15 a share, it is, has a market cap of 2.8 billion. If it does, in fact, achieve sales of two to four billion by 2025, conservatively, you've got a 14 to 40 billion dollar market cap. Um, and that's based on a sales price of um, seven or a, 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 a price for sale seven to 10 times revenue. So we have a tremendous opportunity here uh, to take advantage of this stock. Now, what I am committed to do is learn more about it. What I've also recognized is they have two other drugs in the pipeline, um, BCX9930, which is an oral factor D. I'm not real sure what that is, um, but from what I read, this is their most valuable asset. And it is what is called a orphan drug, which means it's the only one of its kind, as I understand it. And thus it's on a fast track for approval. And I'm going to cover that in more detail in tomorrow's video. Then they have another drug called G-A-L-I-D-E-S-I-V-I-R. This is an antiviral. Um, and it is, they are being encouraged to develop it by the government with funding of $147 million. And I, I don't believe that money is all going to uh, BioCrisp. I believe this is the government saying, we need to develop this 
uh, antiviral for possible bio, bio attacks in the future. So in essence, what this is, is to say that we have learned from um, COVID-19 that we are susceptible to the potential of a biochemical attack by someone creating a virus and putting it out there. So the government has said to, I guess, the general community that we will put up $147 million for the finding of an antiviral. Well, as it is, BioCrisp has one in the works, and that is this Galidisavir, whatever. So that's in the pipeline. So what I think I have discovered is a stock in my backyard that could could explode. Is it a takeover? Is it something uh, that one or three, uh, all three of these drugs could be bought by a major pharmaceutical company? I don't know. I don't know. So what am I going to do to find out? Yesterday, I made a call. Uh, I called their head of um, publicity and, and communications, and I spoke to, uh, to Catherine, and I asked her for an interview. And I asked her for an interview with the CEO and uh, possibly the head of their research department, the gentleman who started this company 25 years ago. She has asked me, is this something you want to do immediately? Do you have a time schedule? I said, I'd like to get it done quickly because I'd like my, my viewers, my subscribers to know more about this company than any other company they invest in. And that's the, that's, that's the direction I'm going. I think earlier this week, I told you that I have, I have reached out to the, the, the staff of the, the people at edits and, um, and, and several other biotech companies and I, and in located in Boston. And I have said, I am going to make a trip. I would like to sit down and learn more about your business and teach my viewers, my subscribers, the people who come to my Patreon, uh, my Discord, and uh, make them, help them make good investment decisions. I, I just, I, I, as, as I've been in this a little over a year now, I said, why not? Uh, rather than read somebody else's analysis of a company, why not just reach out to them and say, I'll come, I'll come to your office and let's talk about it. And you explain to me your business plan. Are you building BioCrisp to sell it? Are you building these, these drugs to sell them to a pharmaceutical company? Or are you going to take on the marketing element. How does your industry work? And what is your objective? And where do you fit into it overall? Because again, I'm looking at this uh, hereditary NGO Dejima, and I'm saying that's a condition, a genomic condition that could be totally wiped out of these 50,000 people in the United in the world with CRISPR. How does that fit in? Or is that so far in the future? Or is the price tag on that so high that it isn't going to happen anytime soon? I need to know that as an investor. You need to know that as an investor. And I'm committed to go find it out. So that's my discovery. Uh, I may miss some videos, uh, some days. I, I, I'm going to try not to. Tomorrow, I will do a follow up, a second video on CRISPR, and we're going to talk about, I'm going to know more about BCX9930, the oral, oral factor D, that 
um, we 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 know is is uh, is in the pipeline. And then we're also maybe on the next video going to learn more about this antiviral that we want to stockpile in case of a future pandemic. Okay, I'm excited about this. I think this will give you more value and make my YouTube channel different than every other YouTube channel because we're going to we're going to know what we're investing in. All right. Talk to you again tomorrow about BioCrisp. Don't miss the second installment.